G'day team, uh, welcome to how to dimension like an absolute professional. So this video is jumping the queue a bit. Um, I was planning to do this one in a couple of weeks time when I get to it, but I feel like this is an important one around this time of year for uni. So any students out there uh, watching this one, hopefully you get some red hot dimensioning tips from this. Okay, now the absolute top priority with dimensioning is that you get everything that you need to. And everything you generally need to is going to be walls and columns and floors. Anything that's not any of those three things is questionable as to whether you need to dimension it or not, but those three is an absolute guaranteed yes. So you want to dimension in a very methodical way. I dimension from the outside of the house in, and I start by doing an overall on either side and then a sub overall, and then I get into the body of the dimensions so let's do an overall here so we're going to start by clicking on this brickwork or this face of the brickwork here you always do the wall faces so we we're going to dimension it's going to be like that but this is an overall so it's just the outside face i'm going to go all the way to the other side now we're going to zoom in here this wall is a stud wall with cladding so we don't know what cladding they're exactly going to use so we're going to dimension to the stud, not the cladding. So overall, this wall would be 105 mil because it's a 95, or sorry, it's a 90 mil stud wall with 15 mil of cladding on the outside of it. But we don't know that the cladding is actually going to, you know, add up to 15 mil. So we're just going to play it safe and dimension to this stud. That's a very, very sensible thing to do. Now, same deal here. We're gonna go the other side. So this is all one line of brick. This brickwork returns and then the stud wall kicks out. So we're just gonna press tab. Tabbing will go through all of the options of things that you have to dimension. So it's going to, because we're up here, we've got wall faces. We can, if we change it to faces of core, or center of core or faces of core or center lines, that kind of changes how the dimension actually wants to behave, but you should always have it on wall faces because that's just sensible. I will get into center line dimensions at the end of this video. I'm gonna press tab a couple of times until we get to the stud and then drag this out here. So, very good. I'm only gonna dimension the top and the bottom here as well, just as, a, just as an example, so back in here and now we're going to do some sub overalls so this is brickwork stud or oh, cheeky yep perfect so that was going to try and dimension to the door there but As mentioned in a previous video, if you're wondering what the dimension is actually going to attach to, cast your eye down to the corner here where, um, when you've actually got it. So see how that says, you know, basic brick veneer 250 timber. If we go to the inside of this wall here, that says countertop, because for some reason in Revit, it will 100% try and dimension to the cabinetry rather than the stud. As a result of this, before I really go in and do any of these internal dimensions, I'm going to grab the cabinetry, right click, override graphics in view, sorry, hide in view, and then category. So that's going to hide the category of whatever item we've selected. In this case, it's uh, cabinetry slash casework. So they're all gone. They're all out of the way because they're uh, only going to cause you pain if you dimension to them. Actually, I'll, I'll show you what happens if you accidentally dimension to it. So we'll run a lot of dimensions through here because that would be the uh, the next row of dimensions. As you can see, I've, I've, I've clicked in the wrong spot there and the dimensions have kind of wrapped up. So if you want to modify a dimension, so say this got dragged down here, if you want to modify this, go up to wet edit witness line and it essentially sends you back into dimension mode and then we can continue. Okay, so that's looking like a pretty okay line of dimension. We'll move the 90s out so you can actually read them. So what happens now if 
for whatever reason, all the cabinetry in the job gets hidden. And I keep going to override graphics, but I'm really meant to be going here. So override. Okay, so half of your dimension's gone. That's not great. Or if these two things get deleted because you know, you're changing the design. Yeah, well, it's just, it's just getting worse, isn't it? So moral of the story, don't dimension to the cabinetry. And because it's such an easy thing to do, I, I don't even give myself permission to make the mistake. I just hide the cabinetry before I start dimensioning. This being the, like the first kind of interior line of dimensions, we're gonna go through this kind of living and kitchen and then this robe and then this bedroom. The next line is going to be, oh, let's not dimension the wall there, door. It's gonna to be to here. And because we've already got that overall dimension, we'll pick up this wall return here That's a, that's a, red, that's a uh, red hot tip, that one, the create similar tool. And then this goes all the way through like here. So you'll notice that all of my dimensions are perfectly spaced. That's important. That's kind of, that's the number one kind of important rule for making dimensions look neat is if they're all exactly the same dimension, uh, actually exactly the same distance apart, uh, you're going to look pretty red hot. Uh, to whoever is checking your dimensions. So go up here, create similar. First row of dimensions inside the house because this is built out. This will be the first line. See how that little dash line comes up? That means that it's the, uh, that's where the consistent spacing between all of the dimensions are. So, you know, if you place it wrong, you can just at any point drag it up so that it's correct. Same deal here. Very good. So that should be looking, that's looking pretty good. There's more dimensioning to do in here, but you know, we don't have all day. I don't have all day. You don't have all day. Let's move on. Dimensioning to the center lines is something that you need to do for anything that's circular or a, uh, a portal frame, such as a, a universal column. In this project, there's a UC loaded in. So let's go over to structure, column, and then that should do just fine. So let's, let's uh, plop old mate over here. And then we will go to dimension him. So say from this wall, to the center line. So see how that little blue line pops up? That means it's gonna be in the center line is 435 mil. So when you dimension to the center line of something, it's very important to show the center line symbol on the dimension. So at the moment, this one doesn't have the, uh, the symbol automatically loaded in. So we'll go over to edit type, scroll down to center line symbol, and then drop in M center line. Unfortunately, M center line looks like red hot trash. So let's take that off. Now you can either load your own symbol in, which I recommend doing if you're going to be build, building any kind of good looking template. If not, you can do text, click and then right click, go over to symbols and then put a center line symbol in. Additionally, if you know the alt code, that will work too. But yeah, and then that is a much better looking center line symbol to show the people building this that we are dimensioning to the center line of that UC. Yeah, so that's uh, that's scratching the surface of how to dimension like a pro. Different different offices will have different standards. So for example, uh, some offices won't mind if you double up on dimensions. So if we're doing this run of dimensions through here but then we've already given them that 3000 dimension through here. They, they don't mind if you continue to run it through like that. Some of them will tell you not to do that double up. It doesn't matter. That's just you know, as needed. But yeah, that's uh, that's just about it for now. So top priority is to mention everything. Secondary priority, make sure the dimensions are this, an equal distance apart. And then lastly, you can modify however that you wanted dimensions to look by the uh, the type parameters in here. So, you know, all the witness lines and symbols and 
you know the 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 tick marks the font or whatever go go crazy but make it look good that's uh that's important well i hope you got something out of this and um we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon thank you for listening